Is the energy crisis actually the best thing that's ever happened? Now, bear with me. This is about the benefits for the environment and green energy and long-term energy security of the UK that will come not only from government level, but right down to businesses and also you as individuals. Now, if you're struggling with energy bills, this video is by no means meant to antagonize or upset you. And if you are struggling with energy bills, there is some help available out there. So make sure you contact your energy company and various other charities that can help. So if you are seriously worried about eating and heating, then contact your energy company. We're in the middle of a an economy war with Russia, Russia stopping gas, making the wholesale price of the world's gas go up. And it is just basically an economical war with Russia while we deal with the Ukraine issue. Obviously, long term, we're going to be talking about some of the solutions that can fix that and also get us away from using gas for electricity and heating needs. But more importantly, if you are watching this video, if, at the time this has been released, there's probably a government package around that is about to be released. But at the time of recording this video, we're just waiting. The new prime minister has just been announced. And this video is basically recorded about five days in advance. Now, across the world, countries are paying more for gas than ever before. And this is increasing the cost of electricity because electricity is produced by burning gas into turbines and that spins the turbines creating electricity and that is one of the reasons why electricity has gone up as well as gas for heating here in the UK. Now in my home country in the UK we have something called a price cap that is the maximum price you can pay for electricity on gas and electric and that price cap is based on a regulatory three month wholesale price and the idea of the price cap was if you came out of contract, the energy company couldn't rip you off. And in the past, the fixed term deals were always cheaper than the price cap. The price cap was just what you defaulted on if you just left the contract alone. It was basically to protect vulnerable customers who didn't keep checking their price to switch to a new company for a new deal all the time. But at the moment, the price cap is cheaper than any fixed long term deal. Now, if you're a business, you're not protected in the UK by the price cap. There is no price cap for business, which means that I'm, for my premises at work, I've seen my price of 14 pence per kilowatt hour shoot to 90p per kilowatt hour. And today I just got a quote for one pound 10 a kilowatt hour, which is a, an extraordinary price rise. So what's gonna be done for businesses and people like me? Well, there is possible chance that some government things have come in. However, even with the current price cap, even with the current prices, we're going to see 45, 50p for businesses, maybe even more, even with government help. Now, amongst all this doom and gloom, we do have some benefits. We're going to have long-term energy security. We're going to be able to stop importing Russia gas all over the world. And we're going to benefit the climate. We're going to benefit the environment. And that is because now, more than ever, the payback on solar panels and wind turbines and renewable energy is the highest it's ever been. And that's because businesses that have never thought about installing solar before, people that have never thought about being having solar on their roof before, are now considering it because the payback has been shortened. For one of the businesses I help manage, we have seen the solar payback based on prices of about 75p a kilowatt, 65p a kilowatt. The payback for that solar is 12 months and that's for a £30,000 install that's with VAT because companies still pay VAT on the UK solar panels and that's for a non-VAT registered business they're going to see payback in 12 months on a 100 panel system and I think despite all the terrible parts of the energy crisis we are going to see some benefits of all this solar being fitted on the system now I understand solar is a luxury you can either afford it or you can't now for a business it's a business decision it's a no-brainer the super tax deductions if you're a limited company uh, there's so much more benefits to, to companies and companies can get company loans they can borrow the money they can offset the money you know because they they can show to the bank that the borrowing that money is cheaper than paying the energy bill if they install the solar so for a business it should be easy for you as a personal customer uh, if you can get a loan and, and you can use it to offset your energy bills that's great if you are in you know real financial difficulty you might go well i can't really get i can't afford a loan i can't really afford the energy bills either um, I, and p all these people talking about solar they're getting a luxury that i can't afford what's my benefit nick what is the benefit well most of my viewers are electric car owners, so they are very lucky and can afford, you know, a lot. But if you can't afford an electric car, if you can't afford solar panels, if you can't afford any of these luxuries, 
the benefit to you is the more people that fit solar, the more people that fit home storage systems, means the less demand on the gas that's being used to produce electricity, which means lower wholesale rates, means that more of that the wind turbines and solar farms are commercial solar farms that energy companies install, means that that price is a lot lower than gas, which means in turn, more people fitting solar, more people providing their own energy, means lower wholesale price, means lower cost, for everybody. Now I briefly mentioned batteries and there are some people that can't have solar because maybe their roof doesn't work or they're in a certain area that doesn't allow solar on roofs. There's a lot of protected areas in the UK that don't allow it. You might not have a, an adequate roof, it might be always in the shade. So what are the solutions for you? Well, batteries will be that solution. Now I have done a series of reviews on EV chargers on my channel, as you already know if you've been tuning into me for a while, but I will be doing a series of reviews on EV batteries. That's right, so starting hopefully at the start, maybe at the end of this year, I've got some batteries coming from some new manufacturers that want to get into the UK market, and I'll be reviewing those batteries. There's also a possible UK-based company that I'm thinking of introducing back to that have been discussing uh, getting a product ready for next year. So if you are interested in learning about batteries and solar and how just having a battery with no solar could offset your energy, then go and click subscribe, hit that notification bell, and that series will be coming hopefully by the end of this year. I want to appeal to the government, and I say to you, the government, at the moment you've got 0% VAT on solar for domestic customers. It's still 20% for business. Now, there is an argument, 20% VAT for business customers is fine. Business customers are that registered, you're going to claim it back anyway. Well, what about the businesses that aren't that registered? If you're going to get it back anyway, then just make it 0% VAT on all solar. And last and most importantly, there's no 20%, there's 20% VAT on batteries only. So if you're just buying batteries, you still pay 20% of that. If you have it with a solar system, yes, you get the, the battery for 0%. But maybe all renewable technologies like that should be 0% of that. So 0% on heat pumps, 0% on batteries, 0% on solar. And that way, if someone wants to buy a battery at 0% VAT and offset their on-peak and off-peak electricity with that, other energy that should be allowed there should also be maybe some some mcc for just batteries so if you wanted to export some of your power and fluctuate and play the grid game that way with off peak and discharging during the peak that'd be nice and i'd like to see the government regulate a seg price cap so a minimum off off drum set a minimum seg at the moment there's no minimum on the seg the energy company can effectively pay you Nothing, next to nothing for your solar export. It'd be nice to them to set a minimum seg cap, you know, minimum amount, because a lot, a lot of people rightly are complaining that they are uh, exporting energy and being paid 6p a kilowatt hour, 7p a kilowatt hour, but they're importing it later on in the day for 35, 40p. And there might be some argument that the energy companies don't need it at that certain time of the day, but if you've got a battery storage system and you can off set it and send it back at a different time that there needs to be some sort of rejigging of the way seg works i personally think i want to know what you think in the comments so let me know down below also i think it's really weird that liz trust who's the new prime minister in the uk has been talking all about letting fracking into uh, communities where they want fracking and as far as i know there's no communities that actually want fracking i think that's just a word of going we're going to have fracking we're going to get it through now Fracking is a great idea if you want to stay on gas and you don't care about earthquakes and the possible environmental disasters that come with fracking. Uh, but anyone would agree that fracking is a terrible idea, especially when you can improve onshore wind turbines that are being denied basically planning permission. Now, personally for me, I'd rather see a wind turbine, you know, in the in the fields around me. We got we've got pylons at the moment you know pylons are all over the place i'd much rather see a wind turbine than a pylon maybe we get, get uh, some pylons onshore again you know onshore wind would be a nice thing to see i think a lot of people in fracking communities would rather have a wind turbine there than them fracking let me know in the comments which one would you prefer wind turbines or fracking so just to wrap this up we've basically spoken about how solar payback is the cheapest it's ever been ever I mean, if you have a short solar payback on a domestic or commercial, let me know what the payback is. I want to know what the shortest is. I think the shortest I've seen is our business, which is about 12, it's 11, 11, 11 months-ish is about the payback. One of our other businesses is about uh, 15 months. What's the shortest time you've gotten payback 
based on the calculations that people have sent you. How are you finding the people quoting for solar? I know every single solar installer around the country is flooded. So have you managed to get a quote? Have you managed to get a date? What's the lead times you're seeing? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you very, very much for watching today's video and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.